All right, this is 33rd day of my commitment. I am talking to the camera for 15 minutes every day, practicing my English, practicing my pronunciation, mastering my grammar, learning how to avoid fillers, how to make silent pauses when necessary. And uh, this is it. So now I'm going to talk about five axioms of communication. I'm currently working on the book which is called Communication Works. I read one chapter a day and then I talk about this book explaining what I read. And then I go back and read it again and see how well I can talk and how well I can explain what I read. Yesterday I was talking about five axioms of communication. There was the first axiom, you cannot not communicate. So this axiom is all about behavior. Behavior doesn't have no opposite. Therefore, when you are in a social whatever situation, environment, when you are surrounded by people, you cannot not communicate. You always, your behavior communicates something all the time. Even if you don't open your mouth to say something, it's still communication. So in there, Four strategies to avoid communication. First is to reject communication, to say bluntly that, you know, I don't want to talk with you. I <laughs> will not do that. This is the first way, but usually people don't have a skill which allows them to reject communication because it's a skill. Usually it's not so easy to do. And uh, they prefer to accept communication. It's the second strategy. So you accept communication in hope that uh, it's going to end soon. Following the law of least effort. So the second strategy is to accept it. But again, you do it unwillingly and you don't like to communicate. And you show by your, you know, by your, whatever you say, how you behave. You show that you don't want to do that and probably other people will not force you. The third is to disqualify yourself, your communication, which means that you just start talking nonsense, contradict yourself, maybe making some silly jokes, which nobody can understand. So you do some stupid things and again, you hope that people just will not communicate with you if you do this sort of behavior whatever and the fourth is pretending that you want to communicate but you just don't you can't do that because of x where x may be everything you're nervous you're tired you don't have time you must do something else so you just find the reason and you say oh listen i can't I can go with you anywhere today since I'm busy, I'm sorry. <laughs> but actually you are not busy, that's the point. You're avoiding communication by finding a reason and uh, basically lying. And most of these strategies, they're lies. You use lies to avoid communication. Well, I think the best way, of course, is just to say straightforwardly that, you know, I don't want to communicate with you. But if you can do that, probably the last way is also suitable like the second and the third i don't think they're <laughs> well sometimes of course we all do that but maybe there should be some you know mix of all these four anyway so it was the first uh, axiom you cannot not communicate so whenever you are with other people you always communicate something if you don't want to do that learn how to how to avoid communication employ certain strategies whatever the second axiom is every interaction has a content and uh, relationship dimension. So what does it mean? There's obviously content, which is information which you share with other people when you communicate. And there's a relationship level. And this relationship level means that you have a certain relationship to the person or people with whom you interact. And uh, on this level, you 
may show your personal beliefs, uh, your opinions, your expectations, whatever. So an information level basically means that you may say something like whatever. I'm speaking to the camera and uh, probably I may say something like you must watch my video. So I may say it. You must watch my video. Please. I ask you just watch my video. This is like relationship level. So if we, if I say it like this, of course, I'm trying to mock it. But in reality, I may say I'm really ask you please watch my videos it's so important for me i'm doing it for you i want to get your approval it's so so bloody important for me please please so it's like i'm sure one sort of relationship if i tell you something like you're a fucking idiot and you must watch my videos to understand something to learn something about yourself to you know, get smarter you must do that it's another level so and there's always many different levels so i may talk to you from a kind of authoritative position so i may tell you that you know i know something i explain it to you you must learn it or i might just you know make fool of myself so the point is there are different different relationship level but it's just simple since i'm talking about like you know it's a camera i talk to the camera i published on the internet it's not an actual interaction but when there are two people, let's say, you know, a boss and employee. So there's, you may see immediately how boss uses his tone, uses his gestures, nonverbal communication to show that he is or she is a boss. An employee, when he speaks to a boss, it's also like kind of submissive. So it's, ob it's seen. But when there is no defined defined relationships for example two strangers so they start talking to each other and uh, there are all sorts of relationship between these two strangers so one may uh, show dominance another may show whatever may, may also show dominance the point is there are different relationship levels and uh, they're important and if you learn how to read other people by paying attention to on which relationship level they communicate to you, it's gonna be easier for you to understand better how to manage your communication with people in general. And you will also learn to you know, to get important information which you need from these people. Anyway, there are three, again, three concepts. When we interact with each other, we may reject, confirm confirm yeah we may confirm we may reject and when and we may disconfirm somebody else's self image or self uh what was the word does my self image let's say self identity so what does it mean when we communicate and uh, let's say i believe that i'm you know a teacher let's say <laughs> Yeah, and I'm trying to teach you now uh, to speak to yourself. I'm trying to teach you to make self-talks. And uh, you are watching my videos. And you may say, look, well, now, of course, you can't say anything to me. But you may write a comment, right? And it's also kind of feedback. So you may write a comment like, you are not a teacher. You're a fucking idiot. I'm <laughs> I uh, don't believe that you know something, that you're you're qualified as a teacher. You're like, you may tell whatever you you like to tell, but it's not... Uh, true so you are not a teacher you just you know doing your self-talk and that's probably okay but if you try to establish yourself as a teacher you have to go in university learn something get a license and then after that of course you may teach something but now you're not a teacher you're just a you are nobody and this rejection so you tell to another person that uh, he or she isn't whatever what he or she thinks he are but again it's like i'm not a teacher i know that i'm not trying to teach you here i'm just doing self-talk i'm practicing my language but in a real situation when you communicate with people again you may hold certain beliefs about yourself you believe that you are smart and uh, you are talking to another person you know maybe telling some story maybe sharing certain knowledge and if they reject you it means that they basically don't take you as smart you try to make 
they try to make fun of you they try to joke they try to disqualify you they try to denounce you and whatever so this is rejection uh, the second uh, yeah it's rejection uh, and uh, actually the first was confirmation <laughs> so you confirm somebody else's belief but doesn't matter let's say the first is rejection the second is confirm so you may confirm somebody else's self-image simply by if again if uh, if uh, one person thinks he is smart and other people just may ask him for advice uh, ask him to help them to understand something yeah it, they confirm his or her self-image and uh, yeah that's basically uh again relationship content right so on a relationship level you have to understand how other people perceive you and you have to understand what you are trying to share what you are talking about what's your self-image how your self-image is different in different interactions with different people because with some people you may play a role of smart guy and with other people you may play a role of silly guy it's like it all depends on bright different contexts but anyway so uh, rejection and the third is disconfirm so when you disconfirm it means that you basically da don't give any feedback feedback to people that's exactly what you do to me <laughs> so you don't write me comments that's cool you don't uh, engage in a uh, real communication with me and uh, this is disconfirm so you basically you say nothing you don't care about other people when you communicate with them whatsoever this is disconfirm and uh, this is according to william james the, <laughs> the hard psychologist william james the hardest punishment which uh, other people may give you so they they don't tell you that you're wrong they just ignore you all the time no matter whether whether you're wrong or right they just ignore you and this is well to many people it's very hard to to or to do something with that yeah, it may even cause severe depression but uh, you know in many situations this also teaches you a lot so when there's disconfirm when people disconfirm you they don't pay attention they don't care it may lead to very different scenarios of development whatever your your development for example i'm studying language and uh, people may disconfirm my self-image i present myself as a you know, as a student as and as a teacher of course because you know, whenever you study you also teach other people whom you communicate with if you're passionate about, about your studying you teach other people what you learn basically and uh, if there's this confirm you may say oh, okay this is like the way it is i may continue doing what i'm doing i'm doing it not to share it with other people i'm just doing it for myself it helps me i see certain advantages of uh, this and why not or you may but if you put your motivation outside in outer world if you expect something from people and uh, if you try to do something if you go and you know if you try to win their approval you go and uh, tell like look how smart i am i publish all these videos you may watch it watch it you may you know write comments whatever and uh, nobody cares you may get disappointed very quickly and uh, again if you learn how to uh get rid of this idea that whatever you do you do it for other people and when you ex expect to be rewarded by their attention uh yeah in some case if you get lots of approval it may be healthy and it may help you to develop your character to develop your abilities but uh if you get rejections it's painful and if you get uh, disconfirm it's even more painful so <laughs> that's why uh i think that whenever we do we first have to understand that we do it for ourselves so there should be motivation not related to other people if i write poetry i don't expect that everybody loves me and read my poetry and you know, understand it ask me to come to some meetings and read this poetry no i do it because i like the process i like to focus on writing poetry and i like 
the result i may write a poem and i say well, that's cool i can do it <laughs> yeah it's it's a funny uh piece of art and i may do it better next time i may write something else oh i have just uh one minute to finish this yeah yesterday i said that i don't like to use this content i don't like to talk all the time about certain things which i read from books i like to be more kind of authentic to speak about what's going on in my life what i'm doing because now i'm doing lots of things which uh, uh, demand attention i need to talk about now i'm now i'm currently i'm reading shakespeare i'm watching Wes cecil's lectures and i want to talk about that but somehow i uh, force myself to talk about the book to get through all this communication you know stuff and to, to understand them better because it again yeah, it helps me to figure out uh, way deeper what I learn what I study but yeah probably I'll go through these five axioms and uh, then I'll change it and sometimes probably I will talk about what I read from the book and other days I'll talk about something else but now for now that's all uh, see you next time bye bye